Shabbat Shalom. In our parsha, we learn that the Nasim, the heads of the tribes, the leaders of these families, brought the Shoham stones for the breastplate. If we take a closer look in the book of Exodus, chapter 35, verse 27, we notice that the word Nasim, this word that means leaders or heads of tribes, is missing the letter Yud twice. Instead of being spelt Nun, Shin, Yud, Aleph, Yud, Mem, it is just spelt Nun, Shin, Aleph, Mem. The letter Yud is missing twice. Rashi, quoting a Midrash, offers a beautiful insight. He notes, Rabbi Natan said, What prompted the leaders to donate for the dedication of the altar first, before the rest of the Israelites? Well, in contrast, they did not donate first for the work of the Mishkan. This is what the princess said. This is what the leader said. Let the community donate what they will donate, and whatever they are missing, we will complete. Since the community completed everything, as it is said, and the work was sufficient, the leader said, what are we to do? So they brought the Shoham stones. The leaders of the community didn't have sufficient faith, enough trust in their community members to step up to the plate. They thought to themselves, they're not going to donate enough for the Mishkan, for the tabernacle. People will not do their share. People will not fulfill their communal duties. And so they thought to themselves, let's see what they do. Let's see what the community does. And then we'll pick up the slack. We'll do the rest of the work. Rav Moshe Tzvi Neria, the uh, incredible and significant leader, educator of the Bnei Akiva movement and, and its early years, offers an amazing insight here. He writes, the issue, the deficiency of the leadership of Israel at that time was not one of laziness, of apathy, of lack of care. The true deficiency of the leadership at that time is that they didn't fully recognize the willingness, the longing, the potential, the willpower of the volunteer force of the community of Israel and their desire to participate so greatly, with such great passion, so generously in building the Mishkan. The Nasi says, Harav Moshe Tzvineria, the Nasi is one who is able to lift up the people. Hanasi nose et shivto humeromemo. The word nasi is connected to linso, to lift up, to raise up, to notice the potential in the community, in its members, and to allow those individuals to be raised up, to do their share. There's a story that is told in the Talmud, in Tractate Psachim, Page sixty, um, page, uh, page sixty six, Amud Aleph sixty six A, in which the community forgets a particular halacha relating to Pesach and Shabbat, and they turn to Rav Hillel, and they say to him, "Do you know the halacha?" And Hillel says, "Halacha zu shamati v'shachachti." I heard this halacha, I heard this teaching, but I forgot it. And then he offers an amazing insight. But, but, let Israel do as they do. For if they are not prophets themselves, they are the descendants of prophets.
In other words, Hillel said to those asking and posing the questions, if we don't know what to do, take a moment, step back, see what the community members are doing, see what Israel is doing, and you'll learn something from it because they can lead themselves. I want to share something about this past week. It has been one full week. What has amazed me this past week is to see our community members stepping up to the plate. We now have a caller's task force. We have an errands task force. We have, um, we have a Pesach task force. We have a task force focusing on issues relating to Gan Shalom. All of these task force forces are being headed by members of our community who just jumped into the fray. Our callers task force has 60, uh, has 40 callers. Our errands task force has 40 people, 40 air angels who are willing to go shopping for others. Hanach lehem Israel. Let Beth Israel do as they do. Let them step up. Let them contribute. Let them do the tasks. Because surely if they are not prophet themselves, 